today, guys, to talk about an exciting new product we've been working on for several years. And Dave and the team at Valentis has been anxiously pushing and pushing and waiting. And, and I wanted to give you a little background on this new product. Of course, the, the product is an activated zeolite, a clinoptilite. The zeolites are something that we've heard about in this industry. Those of you that don't know, zeolite is a is a uh, an activated mineral that has an ionic charge that is a naturally occurring compound in nature. It's also referred to as a clinoptilite or clinoptilite. Uh, and that speaks more to its structure. These are diatoms. A diatom is a short word for a diatomaceous earth. It's an organic compound. And when you say clinoptilite, uh, uh, it's, it's more of a structure. It's like a honeycomb, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and the ionic nature of that honeycomb, uh, as designed by nature, it's, it's a magnet, right? And it's designed to pull in uh, heavy metals, lead, mercury, zinc, copper, arsenic, aluminum, right, right? cadmium, and, 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 and kind of like be a detoxifier. But it does that in the soil, in nature as well. Absolutely. Well, it has a negative uh, ion charge, so all the heavy metals are attracted to it. <clears throat> and the human body has a negative char charge? No, the human body runs on a positive charge, and so the, the mineralites that we would consume with a negative ion charge, the idea is those opposites attract, and, and when the body gets a zeolite cage, or even a, a zeolite section, it could be a micronized piece of Correct. the zeolite because it's about the ionic charge particle. Correct. So we're going to call it an active charge particle. And the smaller the active charge particle, by breaking up these cages, the cages are great as a host cage for large uh, accumulation of uh, heavy metals and toxins and pharmaceuticals. It, it does more than just heavy metal, metals and, and toxins because right, a lot of those pharmaceuticals have these heavy metal components as a part of their metabolic makeup, a, a part of their whole chemistry. Right. The aluminum silicates and things that are put onto uh, these drugs. So when you get this little particle, this activated particle, it kind of acts like a, a, a big sweeping magnet exactly. throughout, the, throughout the entire bloodstream yes. instead of these large particles, yeah. right? That Go ahead. That's really one of the beautiful things <clears throat> about uh, our process is that there are a number of people out there that you know have all these uh, patents or they claim to have patents. Most of them don't even actually have patents. There are some uh, zeolite patents that were actually cancer drugs, which uh, some people got a, a uh, agreement with the um, owner of that patent to use in Germany, for instance tried to market it here in the States, a very well-known company did that. Uh, the person that wrote books and claimed to be an expert had no right to that invention or to use it. So a lot of people, there are four or five people out there that claim to be experts on zeolites. They know everything about it. Uh, they're not patent holders and they really don't have the uh, appropriate knowledge. Um, one of the most important things is our starting point. Everybody talks about having to clean their zeolites, get all the bad things out of it. <clears throat> this particular zeolite is 97% pure clinoptilite. The other 3% are two other types of zeolite. So this is it's the old story of quality in, quality out. We're starting with an absolutely pure zeolite product, which when you start with the purest, best zeolite there is, you're at a pretty good starting point. And that's harvested in a partnership with a pharmaceutical extraction company and we're also a pharmaceutical company, and we work together to get this pure zeolite form, yeah. and it's it's almost completely free of contaminants, heavy metals, and inert it's, objects it's, that would contaminate it. It's it's pure. Nobody, when anybody that knows anything about zeolites, uh, would not even believe that this product exists, and that's why it's kind of a heavily guarded secret because you can't get that pure of a product as a starting point. So that's that's the starting point is the purity of the actual uh, zeolite we're using. But we don't stop there. We don't accept that as pure enough. Absolutely There's a whole not. cleansing process. Part of the patent that you wrote and the new patents that you're writing now right. is an additional purity assurance. Let's talk about that assurance well, process and why your cleaning I, process is more unique. Absolutely. What uh, the normal process, which every single person that makes zeolite uses, basically they heat up water, 
they uh, make an acid bath and they put the zeolite in the acid, and that's what they call cleaning the zeolite. Which, and then they boil off the acid to they, get the acid yeah, out. Yeah, which, which works to an extent. Uh, what we do differently than everybody else, everybody, especially all you ladies out there, I'm sure you've taken your diamonds or uh, rings to the jeweler to have them clean. What the jeweler usually does is he puts them in that special little box, which is an ultrasonic uh, machine. It's ultrasound. What our process does is going on that similar uh, cleansing process, we actually put our zeolite solution in very, very sophisticated, very high-powered um, ultrasonic machines to help clean out, as Kevin talked about before, the cages and all the zeolites. So we, first we do go through the acid like everybody else. Then we have the ultrasonic uh, process, which also cleans out the cage. But more importantly, before we even start that, is we have a very special process called thermal shock treatment. So what we do is we use liquid nitrogen. Uh, we bring the zeolite itself down to about 350 degrees below zero. Starting with this material. Starting with this material. Soak it with liquid nitrogen the same way you'd make ice cream. Exactly. And that's minus 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Minus, minus 350. And we almost make a zeolite ice cream. <laughs> exactly. But it's frozen and it's in hard chunks. And actually, if you could thaw it out, you could eat it and it'd be very good. Right. And you clean your, your colon and your bowel and all that. Absolutely. But then you take that, and you do this in small batches. You take that ice cream and, and it, so to speak, that 360, and so it's between 300 and 360 below zero at that instant in time. And at that instant, what do you do? We take it and we immediately put it in boiling water. So we have a 500 degree. So boiling water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. And then you got this 360, so you're over 500 delta. So you have yep. a 500 degree swing yep. from the ice cream to the boiling water. And that causes what? Well, that's thermal shock and it actually causes the pieces to break. A good analogy would be if you have a drink and it's warm and you drop an ice cube in it, what do you do? You hear that crack, crack, crack of the ice cube? That's exactly what we're trying to accomplish here, except this reaction is very violent and it just blows the cages apart and makes beautiful little fragments and also helps clean it. Um, so this is a, another very important step. So we have three different steps uh, for cleansing, for reducing particle size. The sonication also, aside from cleaning, makes smaller particle sizes. So I'm sure that you know many of you out there have heard about we have the smallest particle size there is. Um, we by far have a smaller particle size than anybody else. And we have the clinical research Absolutely. and the uh, independent third-party laboratory research that shows our particle size. But you do not want 100% of all the material to be the submicron size. You do need a variety of sizes because the variety of sizes has different osmotic pressure, different uh, surface tension pressures, and cells have an osmotic pressure that inside the human red blood cell, the water cells within the body, the fat cells within the body, and different locations of cells like brain cells and organ cells. All of those different pressures require different molecular weights and sizes to get in and cleanse and work with it. So a big variety of sizes, with the majority of being in very small sizes, is, is a better soup than just a whole bunch of really, really tiny particles. Absolutely. And uh, actually, when we first came out with this process, uh, you know, word got out that what we were doing with the thermal shock treatment. Uh, surprisingly enough, a number of months later, there are a couple of universities that came out with a number of papers on using thermal shock to reduce particle size of zeolite. So there was a collaboration between uh, a few different universities. Uh, these papers prove that there's about a 75% reduction uh, using thermal shock in your particle size. The other neat thing, I don't know if you can see this, but you can kind of see an example of what we were talking about with the different particle sizes uh, of zeolites. And so this is the university's documented report of the results of their investigation on their thermal shock process. And we found the same thing. In fact, they aren't going to the extreme 500 degree delta that you and I are doing. Um, no. They're doing a they're doing a heat thermal shock. But if you don't have that freezing component, you're not going to get that. We're really breaking along those organic lines. They're like little micro earthquakes. 
and, and it'll break along the organic line. When nature created these 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 diatoms, these zeolites, um, there are natural lines that would hold it all together. And when you do this thermal shock, it breaks on the natural line, like grains of wood. And it's really important to do that because we're keeping the natural structure and components of the natural structure so it can still perform the way nature intended. And that's a critical part of that. And then, after we do the production, I want you to talk about the next two stages. We reactivate that with a, uh, with a uh, without revealing the patent, with a magnetic, uh, a rare earth magnetic impulse Correct. to reset the charge. Yeah. But it was, so when we go for the powder and then we do the cleansing and then we get into this muddy stage and you can kind of see two levels. I don't know if I can hold it. You can see a thinner level at the top, a little uh, darker level in the middle and then a very dark level at the bottom, a little bit of a rainbow. It might be hard to see in this environment, but that's what's going on. Speak about that, Bob. Okay, so after we've done all of our processes, we are, you know, this is the, the uh, product. It takes a couple of days and some special processes of vacuum and uh, settling and things like that. Um, at the end of the process, cleaning this and filtering it, we come out with basically a clear uh, fluid like that, which is the finished uh, product. It's got a light, light haze in it. It's, I think it's reflecting off the light. Um, we actually make two different uh, products out of this. This is very, very, very fine uh, particle size in this, which most of the larger particles have been filtered out. And we also have a variation, which is personally one of my favorites. It has a slight cloudy appearance, and we maintain some of the larger particles in there, which all do different things. So we have very small particles that are bioavailable and some of the larger particles that can actually help in the gut biome. So, so kind of half of this and half of that mixed a little, together? A little bit, yes. Uh -huh. for our, for Gets our us both. second product. So then in the, but in the finished product that we're launching now, we're going to have a more clear look mm -hmm. like this. Uh, it's going to be uh, easily a 30-day supply. It's an oral. You spray it in your mouth, you could spray it on foods, you could spray it on your skin and surfaces. Sure. Um, and it's very familiar with what's out there in the industry as far as delivery system. Mm -hmm. But what sets this apart? What makes this unique? Why aren't all zeolites the same? Why is Valentis is better? Well, first of all, the, the process, the particle size, we maintain a much smaller particle size than anybody else can do with any of their processes. So that makes, gives us bioavailability. Which makes it more bioavailable. And that bioavailability improves bioactivity if the charge is still there. Correct. And we activate the charge. Correct. And then the third thing would be uh, our, our surety of the cleanliness process that we're not giving the body heavy metals. We're actually having a tool to help remove the heavy metals by providing a clean product. Correct. And then it's also affordable, which is the key. So that's the quick summary and overview of the new zeolite product. We'll launch the brand name in a moment so you can really get excited about this. We're only making uh, a 1,000 bottles on this first order just to get people some experiences. So now what we want to do after the 1,000 bottles, and we're going to get some of your experiences, we're going to get some of your testimonies and, and, and feedback, and then we'll make enough product to have a nice volume launch. But this is a pre-launch for special people who have been asking for this product to give it a shot. It's really going to be a lot of fun. We're very excited about it.